So I'm going to walk you through my workflow for how I add voice acting to my game. First, I get the voice files from the voice actor. I typically ask for one long file with all the takes in it. Some people prefer the lines to be pre-cut up, but I like to process the audio in batches, so this works best for me. I'm using Audacity, which is a free and open source audio editing program. It's what I've been using for the past 10 years, and it just works. So typically voice actors will provide two to three takes per line. So for this one, we can hear three takes for this line. You're representing, uh, Miss Audacity? You're representing, uh, Miss Audacity? You're representing, uh, Miss Audacity? I think I like take one the best, so I'm going to highlight this take and I'm going to hit Control B on Windows. And what this does is it makes a label for this particular selection. And if I click off, the label still exists. So if we zoom in, I want to see where the waveform starts so that there's not too much dead space before the actual sound. You're so here is where the label's gonna start. I, I hold down shift and I drag this to the point where I want the label to start out. And then at the end, let's see if there's any audible noise here. Yeah, there's nothing. So we can hold down shift and drag this a bit closer to the end of the waveform. You never want to cut off the waveform before it finishes. I usually like to have some dead space at the end, just in case. So with one line down, we move to the next line, and we hear the takes for that. Don't know her. In fact, I don't even know anyone named Ashley for that matter. Don't know her. In fact, I don't even know anyone named Ashley for that matter. Don't know her. In fact, I don't even know anyone named Ashley for that matter. I think I like this take the best. Again, we're going to hit Control B to make a new label. And we're going to shift, click, drag to the start of the waveform and then zoom in to the end of the waveform, shift, click, drag, so that we don't have a lot of dead space at the end. So not to get too repetitive, let's say that we repeat the process for every line, we choose the best take and we are ready to export. What do we do now? So we go to file, export multiple, and the export format is gonna be wave and we're gonna export it. I'm gonna just say to the desktop, we're gonna split the files based on labels and we are going to put the file name prefix as let's say Avon, because this is the character whose lines this is for. And we're gonna create a folder on the, oh, and we are going to create a folder called Avon lines. Hit create users desktop Avon lines successfully created and we're gonna hit export. And we're going to hit OK and OK. And if I had 100 labels, I would have to hit OK 100 times. So keep that in mind. Hit OK. And we go to our newly created folder, Avon Lines. So what's next? We're going to open up a new instance of Audacity. And we're going to hit File. We're going to go to Edit Chains because we're going to do a few different things to these WAV files. I'm going to add a new chain. And we're going to call this Voice Line Processing. And the first thing we're going to do is compress the audio and we're going to edit parameters. And what we're going to do here is just keep the defaults. You can change it as needed to your taste. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to hit OK and then OK again. So what it does now is it compresses every file, but it doesn't do anything else after that. We're going to change that. Insert. We're going to normalize next because we need some headroom. Let's say negative one dB will be the new max. That gives us enough headroom so that it's safe when you export it to other programs. Hit OK, OK, and now we have two steps in our chain. It literally just compresses the audio, normalizes it, and then doesn't save. We need to change that. So now we're gonna hit insert, and we're going to export aug, hit OK. Uh-oh, look at this, it's step two. So now we hit move down and now it's step three. And with that, we have completed our chain. It's called voice line processing. We hit okay to save it. And now we are ready to apply the chain to our files. I hit file, apply chain, voice line processing, apply to files, go to our newly created Avon lines folder, select all the voice lines, hit open, and we can see now 
that in our folder, there's a new folder called cleaned. If we go into that, we can see that there's two aug files, which means that our chain worked. And the reason why I did aug files is because that is what's set in the config of my game. If we go into VS Code and enter the options.rpy, we can see that I've added define config.autovoice equals voice, which is the folder name, slash id, which is the id of the say block, dot aug. You could change this to dot wave or dot mp3, but dot aug doesn't have any restrictive licensing agreements and has a lower file size than dot wave. But how do you find the ID of each say block? Well, for that, we're going to need to open the RenPy SDK and we're going to hit extract dialog. And I'm just going to put strip text tags from dialog and the language is none, which is the default. If you haven't explicitly set a language for your RenPy project, then chances are the language is going to be none. And we're going to export it as a tab delimited spreadsheet. The reason why I'm choosing tab instead of txt is because it's easier to find the line you're looking for in an Excel sheet than it is to find it in Notepad. So it looks like it finished generating. We're going to go to the base directory and we're going to see that a dialog.tab file has generated. We're going to double click to open and it opens in Excel if you have Excel. I'm going to hit filter. I'm going to filter the character by Avon. Hit OK. And we can see that the first column is the identifier. This is an ID that is unique for every dialog line. And the way that we find the ID for our voice files is to compare the dialog. So if we go back to our Avon lines folder and we hit this one. Don't know her. In fact. All right. So we're going to do control F and I'm going to search for don't know her find next and it looks like we have a match don't know her in fact i don't even know anyone named ashley for that matter so that dialogue line has an id of suspect one underscore whatever we're going to copy that go back to our folder and paste the id so that the new file name is the id.og and this matches the template that we set in options.rpy if we go back to the sdk and go to the game directory we can see there is a folder called voice. If we open it, we can see that every file in here has a name that corresponds with an ID. So for example, if we play this one, if you've ever heard of how cut through the ID, let's copy that and try to find it in the Excel sheet. So we are going to go back into the Excel sheet and we're going to do control F and we're going to paste in the ID. And here it is. If you ever heard how Cutthroat the Yellow, so that just means that the voice file is properly named. So once you're done naming all of your audio files, you would drag them into your voice folder, provided that you also have this line in your options.rpy file, or at least defined somewhere in your RenPy project. I don't think it needs to be in options.rpy, but this is where I put it. If you want to know more about RenPy's auto voice feature, I will post a link to the RenPy documentation in the video description.